Journalist unions in Somalia in unison with a number of ambassadorial stakeholders call for upholding of press rights in the war-torn nation at an event sponsored by the Embassy of the Kingdom of Sweden to Somalia. The group advocated for friendly media policies from the federal government of Somalia, stating that this would abate militants' activities in the nation. During an event held in the capital Mogadishu attended by senior journalists and media associations, Simha chairman Hassan Ali Gese noted the important role the IMS and partners play in the way forward in the media. He also thanked the stakeholders and IMS and Forjo for the support. <laughs> سيدا سيلا ميدنا وريه وإفكسكي وسكبي حكرين إيو داغي كي سحافة داغي قرنا وحيكو في عانتا هاي إن شروع داس ميش وودن بيس لالاتو ولا داغن قليو حد با سيغاشن بغولكي ومريسا ميل في عانا لسيسو غاري وحانكو حما رونتي شروع داغو داغ 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 بارلمانك سومالي هوريا لنو يهي عبد الله يوسف إيا آدم مدوبا صوب اللا بيت بيت دا بيك صوب اللا باتي الله نحرسه إلا حد أيان أن تبصعنا بالوان كذا تك دون كجر وحش يعني شرعي وجو ديرا لقد دودي نو نقضي مركا. During the closing remarks by the ambassador of the Kingdom of Sweden to the federal government of Somalia, Paul Lingard, who participated in the event virtually, said that the media has a role in playing as a source of information. The ambassador emphasized that a more stable Somalia requires accountability and freedom of expression at its heart as he commended all on the courage and determination of the Somali journalists to carry out their work in the midst of many challenges. We are uh, really looking forward to uh, continue um, a continued uh, partnership. And uh, let me also thank all the uh, panelists for uh, engaging uh, us in a, in a fruitful um, discussion on the media's role in Somalia and, of course, the, the challenging working conditions um, that media representatives uh, are facing. Um, I really think that we had a successful, um, interesting um, discussion, um, and um, this should not be the end today. Um, the state building process and um, the steps towards a more um, democratic, stable, um, pluralistic Somalia uh, will continue. And um, as we go forward, uh, I hope that uh, media will be able to play its uh, role fully as an uh, impartial um, source of information and a watchdog and uh, defender of um, democracy as it uh, influences um, public opinion. So I look forward to um, continued engagement with um, you all on this very important um, subject. Thank you very much. Among the ambassadors who also participated in the event virtually include Ed Barnett, charge the affairs embassy of the United Kingdom, Stone Soon, ambassador of Denmark. It is on all of us to help mitigate those risks, including through legislation, regulation, policy dialogue with the government. Now, um, to get more specific, um, other than thanking you all for your efforts on this important agenda, it's clear that the uh, directive of 8th October on media, released by the Ministry of Information, imposes restrictions on media freedom in Somalia. Uh, there can be several purposes or reasons behind this, but it does also limit, it obviously limits media freedom. So at the same time, we know there is a need for more nuanced reporting and to move away from self-censorship, which sometimes is imposed on journalists uh, to protect themselves. Now, I'm interested to hear how you collectively, as experts in the field and practitioners, how, would, how do you work on taking this agenda forward and, and improving the conditions for journalists in Somalia? Of course, also to guide us in how might we support. Thank you very much. And uh, Sir Asha Mufantin, can you repeat the question? Yes. 
Yes, I'm happy to. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay, very. So the question is, given the um, the 8th October Directive on Media, which imposes restrictions on media freedom, um, basically also to a certain degree may force journalists to uh, to self censorship. How do we um, how do we address this agenda? Basically, how do we improve the conditions for journalists in Somalia, including through legislation, regulation, policy dialogue with the government? Now, um, to get more specific, um, other than thanking you all for your efforts on this important agenda, it's clear that the uh, directive of 8 October on media, released by the Ministry of Information, imposes restrictions on media freedom in Somalia. Uh, there can be several purposes or reasons behind this, but it does also limit, it obviously limits media freedom. So at the same time, we know there is a need for more nuanced reporting and to move away from self-censorship, which sometimes is imposed on journalists uh, to protect themselves. Now, I'm interested to hear how you collectively, as experts in the field and practitioners, how, would, how do you work on taking this agenda forward and, and improving the conditions for journalists in Somalia? Of course, also to guide us in how might we support. Thank you very much. And uh, so Asha Mufantin, can you repeat the question? Yes, I'm happy to. Oh. Uh, can, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay, very. so the question is, given the, um, the 8th October Directive on Media, which imposes restrictions on media freedom, um, basically also to a certain degree may force journalists to, uh, to self-censorship, how, um, how do we address this agenda? Basically, how do we improve the conditions for journalists in Somalia? And Ganma Andres home, the ambassador of Norway. The event comes amid growing pressure on Somali journalists by the government since the government declared an all-war against Al-Shabaab last year. The government has said journalists reporting on Al-Shabaab activities should either go to the scene or abide by authorities' restrictions. Abdullah Ahmed Mumin, the Secretary General of the Somalia Journalist Syndicate, an independent journalist union based in Mogadishu was arrested last year after criticizing a government decree telling journalists not to report on Al-Shabaab propaganda. Somalia is considered one of the most dangerous places in the world to be a journalist. According to media watchdogs, journalists face risks including detentions, attacks and threats. 